Well, welcome back to the shop. Uh, I had uh, some comments on the last video that we did on uh, holes where I actually recorded from my office and a lot of feedback said, get back in the workshop. That's uh, where the best videos are shot. We like to see what you've got going on and what you're doing. So with that, welcome back. Today's tech talk is going to be about floor performance. As always, I'm Steve Rodowski, Territory Manager for Trust Choice Warehouser in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. And what I have before you today is a mock-up of a floor system. And I wanna talk specifically about Warehouser's TJ Pro rating or how we go about evaluating floors. So there's two types of floors that we typically look at and they're going to either be a static or a dynamic. And a static floor really only looks at uh, deflection, L over 360, L over 480, and it's just looking at how far does a joist sag at its center. However, that's not going to tell us what the floor is going to do over short spans, long span, the depth of the floor, how that floor is going to feel as we walk across it, as our children play across it, and as our grandparents yell at us for being too rowdy in the house and great grandma's china is going to fall out of the cabinet. If you can relate to the grandma scenario, um, those floors were perfectly sound. They were typically constructed out of two by eight, two by 10. Um, in my house that I live in, uh, some of that joist work is still hand-hewn oak beams. However, we've kind of evolved from there, just like everything else. And people nowadays live a lot more in their homes. It's not about that single closet. It's not about uh, work clothes and then your Sunday best. We live in our houses, we entertain in our houses, uh, and currently a lot of us are even working from our houses due to the circumstances that we're at. So as I get into the floor performance, um, three things that affect it. Uh, we're going to have frequency, which is a measurement over time, and that is going to be a wave or a vibration uh, movement. And then you have amplitude, which is how much or how large that wave is. And then the third one is dampening and how we remove increased amplitude or how we increase frequency. So when we discuss frequency, we're talking about hertz. And anything that is less than, at or less than eight hertz uh, is usually felt by the human body as an unpleasant feeling. So in frequency, we wanna come up with a way to increase that number. Uh, when we're looking at amplitude, amplitude is a, a wave movement and it's the, really it's what happens as the joist goes into deflection and then comes back, how that feels and the transition between those two. But together, the movement and the frequencies that happen are what cause uh, glasses to shake, um, feel, floor to feel as though it's unstable underneath you, and just possibly the lack of uh, something that you would relate to as quality. So what I have here is a mock-up of a floor system. And before we get started on the different things that we can do to work in floor performance, I wanna take a moment to say when you're framing, remember that you need lateral supports to hold the eye joists in place. Until your decking is glued and screwed or glued and nailed uh, in position, your joists can still move and can fall over or rotate out of place. So a lot of times we'll see that happen is if uh, builders are walking across uh, unsupported joists on long spans, those middle sections of the joists are gonna be very wobbly until they're supported. Or if you're putting and loading a lot of material on the deck that isn't spaced out across multiple joists, the joists can rotate. And what that's gonna look like is as that weight's applied, all the joists are gonna tip in one direction. And what we call that's a lateral movement and they're laterally going to fall. And you can have where just a few happen to tumble over, or it can be a domino effect where they all start to spill over. So with that, after your floor joists are in, properly nailed to your uh, bottom plate, uh, properly attached at your uh, front and rear rim joist, the next application is going to be some type of construction adhesive or recommended subfloor adhesive by the OSP or plywood manufacturer. So what I have here is our, uh, our mock-up of our floor, and we're going to put this down on top of our joists. And you're gonna see the joists move. Um, they're gonna to wanna to shift out of position. But what I'm showing is that once you have a floor on, you have the ability to still walk across it, to load things up. The joists are now working in continuity with each other. They are secured, like I said, through composite action. Uh, using glue or uh, structural composite adhesives. That 
It helps bind everything together and make it one. So at this point, this is typical of what we see in most homes. Now, if you are in an area that has to be sprinkled, a lot of times uh, you're not gonna have a sheetrock uh, underside for your ceiling in your basement. Obviously on your first floor going up to your second floor, you would have that. But once this is done, where some of this frequency and where some of this um, amplitude comes from is as you're walking across it, you can see that the joists, as you put weight on, the bottoms are moving and we call that flutter. And what happens is as a joist starts to flutter, it moves throughout the span of that joist until it can find somewhere to be absorbed. Now, it can be absorbed through partitioned walls that are in the area. It could be absorbed um, in more mass that's on the floor. So if you had a thicker floor or if you had a stiffer OSB on the floor, which we'll actually talk about a couple OSBs towards the end, um, that's going to help. If you did a poured overlay or a gypcrete overlay because of uh, radiant heating, that's going to add uh, additional mass to help um, remove that frequency and that amplitude. One thing to take note though is mass works very well in short spans, but in extremely long spans, mass can hurt. And what I mean by mass can hurt is think of a ship in the water and a small paddle boat or a small rowboat in the water. And if they are moving forward, as they get closer to shore, the little boat, which has a lot less mass, um, has to keep rowing and keep going until it almost gets to shore. It's going to slow down much faster because there isn't a lot of mass there to keep it propelling uh, forward or to keep that momentum up. Now take a big cargo ship or container ship. If that's out at sea and it's chugging along full steam ahead, it's going to take a long time to slow all of that mass down. Once you start it going, it takes a long time to stop it. But there's ways to work through this and ways to control it. Um, one of the first things that we do, uh, we can either apply strong backs or we can apply what I'm going to be considering here, our uh, gypsum or half inch sheetrock sealant. So when I apply this similarly to our how we did the um, floor OSB above. So now what happens is when we push down on this, the joists are going to deflect. It's only natural, everything deflects. If things didn't have deflection, concrete, steel, um, wood, plastic, they would crack. Um, deflection is there as a, um, a buffer to breaking. Um, and it's what materials do, everything deflects. So now as we start to move across and we deflect, everything's moving as a unit. And that material, the OSB or the strong back, when they get to the ends of the walls or when they're attached, can actually help drive that vibration and drive that um, frequency into the concrete walls, into other stud walls, and can help dissipate. So in most homes, the one thing that design professionals or the builder has the least control over is the length of the joist. And that's because rooms have already been designated for great rooms, kitchens, bathrooms. Um, some of these bathrooms could be the size of a great room uh, with multiple shower heads, uh, a big soaking bathtub, um, kitchens with very large islands and what we call a waterfall countertop or a countertop that uh, hangs out beyond the edge of the, uh, the counter could be two to three feet. So, Floor joist spans are probably gonna be the hardest thing to deal with, but we do have options to work with design professionals, to work with homeowners and builders, to get the floor to where it needs to be, working with the spans that they have. Now, other than adding the gypsum ceiling, which obviously would be on the second floor, what other things can we do? Uh, we can adjust the series of the joist. By increasing the series, we can increase the mass of the joist so we can help dampen uh, that frequency or that amplitude. We can increase the depth of the joist in some areas. Uh, instead of an 11 and 7 eighths, maybe a 14 inch joist is a little bit more appropriate and is going to solve a lot of those issues. We can change joist spacing. As we move the joist closer together, load sharing uh, starts to take effect and each joist is starting to work and take uh, less of a load than if you were to spread them out further. Remember, as we get further appointment on center spacing, your tributary uh, length is going to put more pounds per square inch 
uh, on each joist. And as we shrink that spacing, it's actually putting less on every joist going across. Um, other things we can do, uh, we can double up joists. That's going to increase mass because now we're putting two in the place of one. Uh, we could go through, add a Jip Creek topping like we talked about. Some of the other things that we can do, uh, a lot of the floors in this market are using uh, Edge Gold 2332nd uh, Premier OSB. Uh, we could move that OSB up to a 7 8 of an inch thickness. Uh, both of them come with a downpour drainage system, which you can see here, so that when that's over the joist, any of the water that's building up on the deck has a way to escape during uh, framing construction. But just by increasing the thickness of the OSB, not only have we added some mass, but we've also stiffened the floor uh, quite a bit. Now, if you don't have the ability to move to a thicker OSB, but want to have a stiffer floor, we could go from what Weyerhaeuser considers good, better, best, uh, your commodity OSB or our edge green, uh, our middle grade or our edge gold, which was uh, probably the industry's number one board until we came out with uh, diamond. So about three to four years ago, uh, we introduced diamond to the market as our best subfloor that's out there. Now, this is going to be a stiffer floor, even though they're both the same in thickness, 23, 30 seconds OSB. Uh, the differences are going to be in the resins and the way that these are put together and pressed. So both great floors, 200-day uh, no-sand warranty on raised uh, edges, 500-day no-sand warranty. Uh, we meet or exceed all of the competition that's out there. Um, no matter what advances they have made, we are the premier of what is happening in the industry today. Not just that, if you have a warehouse or floor from top to bottom, uh, if you need to call a tech support manager or a territory manager out, um, we can refer to all of our products as one. With that, a couple other things to take note in floor performance. I did mention that it is a subjective uh, number and it's rated from a 25 to a 65. Now, why it's subjective is everyone that walks across the floor is going to feel the floor differently. So someone may go on a floor and feel that a 35 feels great. Um, a 30 is, feels a little shaky or to them the vibration isn't the best. But if they got on a, a 50 or a 60, 65 floor, it feels like they're walking on concrete. Now, you can have people that no matter what you do, you could tell them we could get a thousand in floor performance if that was actually a number impossible and they're still not going to be satisfied. And sometimes that really has nothing to do with vibration or with um, amplitude of the joist. Uh, a lot of times you'll get complaints of um, in apartment buildings or what we call high density housing. Uh, things called ITC, which is impact, um, or STC, sound transmission. And sometimes the performance or the perception of that floor is because of the sound that's coming through from up above. Um, if you have kids that are playing and bouncing, um, your baby is up all night crying, uh, your six-year-old decides that she's going to learn to roller skate on your brand new hardwood, um, all of that needs to somehow be coupled into the floor system. And what you may think as a perception of a floor moving could be a sound perception. A floor is only also as good as the people that are installing it. So taking shortcuts, um, coming up with ways that you think are going to be better to install a floor that don't line up with um, the TJ4000 specifiers guide or what a territory manager can bring to the table. Uh, the quality of craftsmanship always pays in the end. If you would like us to take a look at the floors, uh, if you would like to have a conversation prior to your designing, um, the Forte web software that we looked at with the holes the other day, we can do the same thing. I can add all of these different scenarios in, change the different spacings, increase the floor, remove um, the strong backs, put in half inch or five eighths, and give you an idea as to what that floor is going to be like and give you that rating. And what's great about a floor performance rating is that it's a predictable floor performance. Not only can we tell you what it's going to be, we can tell you what it's going to be throughout the entire house. Um, how it's going to react over different types of beams. Um, remember, if you're going over a steel beam or if you're going over a wood beam, uh, if you're going over a bearing wall, all of those things are going to absorb differently and we have to take a look at them all as if they are their own entity to come up with what you're looking for in your own home or business. 
So with that, I really hope you hit like, uh, become a subscriber, and give me some ideas on some other videos you'd like to see. I think the next one we're gonna tackle is going to be on single ply columns versus field designed or field built columns uh, to show um, how much time and money you can actually save by going with a single sized engineered piece of material as opposed to ganging together two by fours through two by eights. So with that, remember, Safety, we're gonna practice it, preach it, and then we're gonna go do our job. Until the next time, have a great day.